Okay, guys and girls, um, today's lecture, Friday, March 27th, um, give you all through the weekend to get this done as well. Um, today, we're starting on, um, as you can see here in the standards, mac, um, social studies, economics, macroeconomics, standard one. Now we're focusing on the unemployment rate and for you to explain how it's used to evaluate those macroeconomic goals we talked about in the previous video. As well, you're gonna to need to be able to identify seasonal, structural, cyclical, that is cyclical. You can say cyclical if you want to, but um, either way works. Seasonal, structural, cyclical, and frictional unemployment. So there are four different types of unemployment. Um, it's not, you're not just unemployed, you don't just have a job, there's some, some more details that go along with this and that's the stuff we're gonna cover um, in today's lecture. So get your um, got a notes pulled up and we will pick up where we left off um, from the other day um, as we ended with GDP. So when it comes to unemployment, first thing you wanna look at and think about is who on this list would be considered to be unemployed, okay? Um, who's considered to be unemployed? If you look at this list of people, um, you got six scenarios here. A man was laid off from his factory job. Um, you have a, a ride operator that works at Six Flags who's not working in January. Um, are they considered unemployed? Um, a teenager who is in high school, a full-time college student, a housewife, and a retired grandmother, okay? Um, and I'll give you a second to think about this. You can pause it for a second if you want to think about it. Okay, now you got six scenarios here. Now, let's cut to the chase. Only one is really counted as unemployed. The man who was laid off from his factory job is considered to be unemployed. Okay, um, ride operator, probably not so much, maybe a little bit. There's, that's a, that's a, an iffy one. And then the teenager in high school, full-time college student, housewife, retired grandmother, really this is the main one. But the true answer for all of these is going to be that it depends. Okay, because much like when we talked about demand, and demand is not simple, straightforward, there's an extra little catch to it. Remember we said that with demand, it's not just wanting it, but the ability to pay for it as well. You gotta have both of those. So considering um, whether or not someone is unemployed, there are two parts to it to be considered unemployed. The most obvious is you don't have a job. Okay, if you don't have a job, that's the first part of being considered unemployed. But there is a second part of that that is just as important to determining whether or not someone is unemployed. So we look at the definition here for unemployment and we see what that second criteria is. Um, first of all, you have to be without work. You don't, you can't have a job or if you are someone who works multiple jobs, maybe you're trying to get unemployment for just one of those jobs, okay? Um, and the second part is you have to be actively seeking work. You have to be trying to get a job somewhere else, okay? You can't, you can't just not have a job. Oh, I'm just sitting at home, I don't have a job, I'm unemployed. Nope, you have to be, you have to be without work and you have to be actively seeking work. You have to be looking for um, a job somewhere else without those if you don't have both of those you don't count as being under unemployed so that's what we meant by and I'll take just a second here to go back that's what I meant on the previous slide when I said all of these depend man was laid off from his factory job well is he looking for another job if so he's unemployed a Six Flags ride operator who doesn't work in January. If they're just not working in January, but they're gonna go back to work in February, they're not considered unemployed. They have to be looking. 
teenager in high school, full-time college student, they count if they're looking for work. Typically, these two would not count. Housewives and retired grandmothers or retired grandfather or whoever would not count toward unemployment. What's the key thing? These two probably are not looking, okay? If they're not looking, it does not count toward unemployment. They don't, they, they don't apply, okay? So these first four, it all kind of depends. These two more than likely don't count because they're probably not, they're probably choosing on their own to stay at home or to retire from the job that they've worked for however long, okay? So as we go back here, so two key things, without work, actively seeking work. Now, what are the four major types of unemployment? Okay, and we'll go through these individually, but go ahead and fill them in on your guided notes. Cyclical unemployment, frictional unemployment, structural unemployment, and seasonal unemployment. Each of these meet a different criteria for why the person is without work. That's what makes the difference for the, for the different types of unemployment is what makes them be without work. Okay, did, did they get let go for some reason? Did they choose to leave on their own? Do they, can they not do the job anymore? What is it? Um, that, that is what classifies these getting into, uh, somebody not having a job getting into one of those four major categories. Okay, now, just like we've told y'all before, you don't have to do math on the e, on the EOC okay so but just so you know how they calculate the unemployment rate I'm going to show you how they calculate it you take the number of people that are looking for work okay you take the number of people that are that are, don't have a job that are out there looking for a job and you divide that number not by everybody you take it and divide it just by the number of people in the labor force Okay, now what we mean by labor force, there are two groups of people in that labor force. First of all, you have to include the people who are looking, okay? If they are looking for a job, they are considered part of the labor force because they want a job, they want to work, they just don't have one right now. Plus, you also have to also include the number of people that are currently working okay so if we go back if you think back to the to the previous question of all those people in that first slide and who who counts and who doesn't anybody who counts would be considered as far as looking plus you add the people that already have jobs the people who wouldn't count in this would be the people like the retired grandmother and grandfather or the stay-at-home housewives or high school students who are just concentrating on their school and not getting a job. Those people don't count. So the only way you count is if you're looking or you currently have a job. Those days play into the unemployment rate. Okay. Now, what is a good rate for unemployment? Four, between four and six percent unemployment is a good rate. Okay, and if you look here, recently we were as low beginning of in, in beginning of March of 2020, beginning of this past month, um, we were at 3.5 percent unemployment. That's the lowest it's been in a long time. That's a really good rate because a good rate, okay, is considered between four and six percent. This is actually, and this got, thinks back to our to the macroeconomic goals. This would be what we can um, consider full employment. Okay, this is what we would consider full employment. Because, well, coach, why isn't full employment everybody having a job? Because you'll see as we go through these examples of the different types of unemployment that you're, the likelihood of having everybody looking for everybody out there that wants a job to have a job is typically not going to happen. There are different reasons. Um, people moving, people making changes, new advances in technology, all these kind of things are always happening. So 
expecting everybody to have a job is not realistic. So somewhere between four and 6% being unemployed is a good thing. Now, understand what this means as well. If that, if we have a unemployment rate between four and 6%, that means that somewhere between 96 to 94% of the people have jobs. Okay. When we say a low unemployment rate, right like that, we're talking about the, the percentage of people in the workforce or in the labor force that don't have a job. So four to six, per, four to six, not 46, four to six percent don't have a job. That's considered full employment. But as recently as the beginning of this month, we were at 3.5%, which again was really good. Now, is that changing right now? Yes. Hopefully you've already done your warm up. Hopefully you've already read the, um, the article that was attached to that. And when you read that article, you will see that millions of people have already filed for unemployment benefits because they're being laid off. Um, places are shutting down because of the coronavirus. And so people are, you know, trying to get some unemployment benefits in the meantime to try and help out. Okay. Um, now, how bad will it get? We'll have to wait and see. It all depends really on how long this thing stretches out, um, how quickly the economy bounces back. Um, I don't think we will get to this right here, okay? With the Great Depression, unemployment got as high as 25%. One out of every four people in the United States that wanted a job or looking for a job did not have one. Okay, one out of four people in the labor force did not have a job. It's a lot of people, guys. Um, to, to put it into perspective, and um, we'll get back to this later, 2008, 2009 was nowhere near this bad here. Okay, so just to give you an idea on that. So what are our, our four types of unemployment? Well, first and foremost, we're going to look at cyclical unemployment. Okay. Now, cyclical unemployment is pretty simple and straightforward. You lose your job because the economy is bad and they can't pay you. Okay. You're a great employee. You do a good job. Um, you haven't done anything wrong, but businesses are closing, businesses are cutting hours, businesses are letting people go because they just don't need as many workers as they did previously, okay? This right now is what you see going on right now, okay? Cyclical unemployment, all these people that you read about that are applying for unemployment benefits right now are doing so because of cyclical unemployment. The economy is bad. People are scared. Businesses are looking at it and saying, we're not getting as many customers coming in. We're not making as much money. So we can't pay for as many workers as we previously did. Okay. So right now you're looking at this right here. Okay. Layoffs are occurring. Okay. When times are good, hiring occurs. Okay. So right now times are bad. People are getting laid off, not getting as many hours, getting cut back. Hopefully, when all the, the quarantine stuff ends and, and we get coronavirus under control or get, um, you know, some, something that can help um, to keep the spread or, or cure it for people, if that can happen, things get back to normal then times are going to get good and hiring is going to occur again. People will get jobs back, maybe a new job, a different job. But one way or the other, it comes down to, as we see up here again, cyclical unemployment. And the only reason you lost your job is because the economy was bad. They can't afford to pay you. Okay. Whether you work at Dairy Queen, whether you work at Walmart, whether you work at Great American Cookie Company or a clothing store, if they're not doing the sales, they're not making the money, 
they can't afford to pay you and have to have to lay you off. Okay. Now, our second type of unemployment is frictional. Okay. Frictional, frictional is on you. Okay. Frictional unemployment is on you. You are looking for a job because of a change of your choosing. And that's the key thing. You choose it. You decide um, to make a, a change in your life. Um, you decide you don't, you're tired of doing the job that you're doing and you want to find another one. You decide you need to move. You decide to get married and move. Or as you see in the example here on the slide, um, I'm a new army wife and I feel overwhelmed. My son and I are moving from California to Fort Lewis, Washington to live on post. My question is about working on post. I work in social services and my husband said that I'm sure to find a job there on post. But I don't know what the process is like. Are there services there that can assist me in finding a job? Why is this woman here unemployed? Why? Because she chose to move from California where she had a job to Fort Lewis, Washington to live on post with her husband. Okay. That is why she is unemployed. unemployed. She's looking for a job because she chose to move. She chose to make that change. Well, coach, she's married to an army guy. She didn't really have a choice. She could. Okay. Um, he could be one place. She could be the other. Now it's not the likeliest of things. It's not what most people would want to have, but when she married somebody in the army, she knew this was a possibility of happening. So again, it still goes back to a choice that was made. Okay. Um, if I all of a sudden decided I didn't want to be a teacher anymore and I wanted to try my hand at something else, find my dream job, so to speak, until I found that dream job, I would be freshly unemployed. Not going to happen. Quick way of making sure that you don't get freshly unemployed, have another job lined up before you quit the one you're currently working. Doesn't always work for you there. And in those cases, you're freshly unemployed. But um, change of your choosing. You decide to stop going to college and get a job full time. You're freshly unemployed until you find that career job or find a job to work. Okay. It's all about your choosing your situations. Okay. Now, third, third is structural. Okay. Structural is about stability, okay, and, and about filling in the holes, okay? Um, if your skills don't match with the jobs that are available, in other words, maybe you don't, there's technology that can do things better than you, then you lose your job because you got beat out by a machine, okay? Um, now, it's not always technology. That's a, easy, that's a good, easy way to think about it. But um, so like we see here with technology, that's more what we're looking at in this example here, of the auto industry going automated. When factories, especially like car plants and stuff like that, when they've gone automated and they have all these electronic arms that attach pieces and, and weld things into place and it's automated, those jobs are done better by those machines more efficiently by the machines. And so you as a human worker, your skills don't match what's needed because you can't do it as efficiently as a machine can. So therefore you get, re you get replaced. If you've ever seen um, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, the one with Johnny Depp, not the old school one, but the one with Johnny Depp. Yes, yeah, a little creepy, but um, in, that, in that movie, Charlie's dad gets replaced in the toothpaste factory by a machine that can more easily put the toothpaste caps on the, on the toothpaste tubes. Okay. He would be structurally unemployed. Now it doesn't always have to be technology. You look at this here, not enough truck drivers on the road to meet demand. There are plenty of people that, that are looking for jobs. There's a lot of need right now for truck drivers delivering supply to different stores or delivering packages to different, to different places as people are ordering things online and trying to stay home. The difference there is lots of people may want jobs, but maybe, 
maybe you don't have a CDL, a, you know, a commercial driver's license. If you don't have a CDL, you can't drive a truck. Um, maybe you don't have a family situation where you can just up and leave for days or weeks at a time delivering packages and delivering goods all over the, all over the U S if you don't have that, that kind of ability to do that, your skills don't match the jobs available. You're structurally unemployed. If you're currently looking for a job and you don't match that job. Okay. Um, so structural unemployment, the skills don't match and just try to try to remember that if you can structural starts with an S skills starts with an S. Okay. Um, for the foundation, for the structure to be strong, everything's got to match up just right. Okay. If you don't have the right pieces of the puzzle in, it's not going to work out. Okay. Now, the next is seasonal. Okay. And seasonal is a little different. If you see down here, unemployment is, is typically adjusted for this. Okay. So it's not really typically seasonal unemployment is not thrown into the typical unemployment rate. You can see what that number is if you really want to, it's available out there, but for someone to be seasonally unemployed, that is a job where they are, you're just out of job, out of work at the time because of the time of year. Okay. Lifeguards, harvesters. Okay. Summertime for the lifeguards, unless it's an indoor pool, summer guard, um, lifeguards are not going to be working at the pools outside of the summer. Summer ends, you're out of a job. Harvesters, um, whether, um, whether planting or picking, um, harvesting the, the food once it's grown or the, or the whatever agricultural product it may have been. Okay. Those kind of jobs are seasonal. When it's not in season, when there's not stuff to be harvested, you're out of, you're out of work. You got to move somewhere else, find something else to do. So you may be temporarily seasonally unemployed for that. Okay. And again, time of year, it's the seasons, winter, summer, fall. Look, think about jobs that are specific to times of year. Think back to the Six Flags operator on the first slide. Okay. That person would be seasonally unemployed. Um, because Six Flags usually shuts down in January because they don't see as much demand. It's cold. Not as many people are going to be coming out. So they shut down for a little bit. And those people are seasonally unemployed in the meantime. Now, what are our main points when it comes to unemployment? What's the main points about it? Well, in a good economy, there's going to be less unemployment, okay? Less unemployment means more jobs, okay? That means more people have jobs. And more people having jobs means that people have money. And as we said before, what makes the economy go? What's the main part of GDP? People spending money okay and when people have jobs people have money and when people have money people spend it so therefore when the economy is good you see less unemployment because people have more jobs that's what you want now how do you know when the economy is bad what's that what does in, unemployment indicate to us more unemployment indicates a bad economy that's the concern right now concern right now is more people are applying for unemployment benefits. We may not be in a bad economy yet, but we were, there's the fear that we're going to go that way if we don't get things corrected fast. Okay. Because the more people unemployed, that means less money spent. Okay. When people don't have jobs. They don't spend as much money which is why people can apply for unemployment benefits. If you're not, if you don't have a job, you're not getting a regular paycheck, you can apply for unemployment benefits. 
and get some money in your pocket from the government to help you keep spending money and make ends meet in the meantime to keep the economy going. That's the also the, the point of the stimulus bill right now, to try and keep money into people's pockets, to keep them spending money so that the economy does not slow down as much as it looks like it could, okay? Now, um, ignore this. We are going to, we actually have an assignment for you. And your assignment is going to be this posted document here, unemployment activity for you. Um, here are your four types of unemployment, cyclical, frictional, structural, and seasonal. For each of these, I want you to, we want you to give us a definition. In this first box here, give a definition of what is cyclical, what is frictional, what is structural, what is seasonal. Go back, to, look at your notes. What, what is it that these things, what is it that happens that makes you cyclically unemployed? What makes you frictionally unemployed? Give that definition. Then, for each of those, give an example. Make up an example of how somebody could be cyclically unemployed. There's plenty of those examples out there right now. How, would, how could somebody be frictionally unemployed? How could somebody be structurally unemployed or seasonally unemployed? And then in the third column here, you just simply need to find a picture um, online and paste it in here. A picture that represents somebody being psychically unemployed. A picture that represents someone being frictionally or structurally or seasonally unemployed. Okay, so pretty straightforward definition. Your, create your own, type up your own example here, okay? And when I say your example, one you come up with, it doesn't have to be necessarily you particularly, but one you come up with. And then a picture that represents this type of unemployment. Doesn't have to match the example, but just find us a picture that represents it. And then down here, read the five scenarios um, from the Kardashians down here, okay? Um, Miss Lane just decided to have a little fun with it but um, read the Kardashians scenarios and highlight the ones if they are counted as unemployed, okay? If they are counted as unemployed, highlight them down here in the bottom, okay? And then turn that in. This will be due um, according to the due date on Google Classroom, so make sure you get those done accordingly, okay? And um, we will post the next video of guided notes for you on um on monday so um get this work done um on friday or over the weekend and we will talk to y'all again on monday thank you all very much hope you stay safe be good folks